Mike and Ron here, shooting live from the Middle East. We're in Israel, in the Dead Sea. Jordan's over there. And we're at one of the most wonderful places in the world. It's the Dead Sea, and there's a lot of awesome science behind it that makes it so wonderful. To give you a brief geogra geographical, historical context, all of these mountains that surround the Dead Sea have lots of salt and minerals in them. After thousands of years of runoff water coming into the sea, all of that salt and minerals got collected, and now it's 34% salt. That's 10 times more than the sea. And that leads to a lot of cool physical properties. In particular, what these properties are called are the colligative properties. Properties of a solution that depend upon its concentration. The common ones are boiling point and vapor pressure. But what's cool about the Dead Sea is its density. You can float here like nowhere else. Nowhere else. Check it out. No hail, baby. When we start thinking about solutions, it's best to bring up the analogy of a ball on a hill because it's something that everyone has intuition for. A ball we want to minimize its potential energy, PE, by minimizing its height and falling down the hill. Similarly, a solution will want to minimize its own potential energy, and that energy is called the Gibbs free energy. The Gibbs free energy G is given by your enthalpy H minus your temperature T times your entropy S. Now, you may never heard of what enthalpy or entropy were before, but we'll give you some simple explanations so you can remember them. Your enthalpy is given by how much heat you have to put in to form something. So if you think about it, you need to heat up a solid to form a liquid, and then you need to heat up a liquid to form a gas. So that means that your, the enthalpy of the solid is the least, the enthalpy of the liquid is in the middle, and the enthalpy of the gas is going to be your highest. Now let's look at entropy. Entropy is a measure of the disorder in system. So if you think about it, gases are pretty disordered. They're all over the place. And that means they have the highest entropies, followed by liquids, which are kind of ordered and kind of disordered, followed by solids, which are pretty darn ordered, as you can imagine. If you notice, the only thing that you can change in the equation is your temperature T. So now let's make a graph of your Gibbs free energy versus your temperature T. So now, let's think about how the Gibbs free energy changes with temperature. First, there's a solid, whose energy doesn't change much with temperature. Then, the liquid phase, whose energy changes much faster with temperature. Because it's more random, there's more entropy. Where the two lines intersect is the freezing point. Beyond this point, the solid can lower its energy by transitioning to the liquid phase, and that's why we see liquids above this temperature. Next is the gas phase, with even more entropy. Now again, the intersection of the two lines is the boiling point, because the liquid can lower its energy by transitioning to the gas phase above this temperature. What happens when we add salt to a liquid is that we lower the enthalpy of the liquid phase, making a new energy versus temperature line, L prime. A consequence of lowering the enthalpy is that the freezing point has decreased and the boiling point has increased. Since all of the lines are linear and the change in the enthalpy is linearly proportional to the change in salt content, the changes in freezing point and boiling point will be linearly proportional to the changes in salt content. The vapor pressure of a solution is defined as the pressure exerted by a gas when in equilibrium with its liquid phase. So what's happening here is we have a gas phase and a liquid phase. And all the time, liquid molecules are jumping out of the liquid into the gas phase, and gas molecules are crashing back into the liquid phase. When the rates of hopping in and hopping out are equal, the gas pressure is constant, and we'll call that the vapor pressure, P. Now, Rayot's law states that the decrease in vapor pressure is linearly proportional to the change in salt content, which will denote the concentration of S. To understand this, let's look at a solution with some solute atoms. Here, the solute atoms are red. In this case, the solute atoms essentially block atoms from entering or leaving the solution. The more solute atoms you have, the more the blocking occurs, and thus they should be linearly proportional to each other. 
Let's enter the lab and show how the freezing point of water changes depending on how much salt we add to it. We're going to make three solutions with different salt concentrations and then measure the freezing points. Our first solution is deionized water from a special faucet in the lab. It's purified so that it has no solutes in it. This is our control, which, after freezing it, should have the normal freezing point of water, which is 0 degrees Celsius. The next solution is a 0.1 mole salt solution, which will show us what adding a little bit of salt will do. We need to dissolve it in water so that all of the salt is dissolved in solution. Last, we have a 1 mole solution of, N of salt, which is 10 times as much salt as before. Look how much salt that is. It is so much that you need to heat it and mix it for a while so it can dissolve. We then put all three solutions in the freezer and waited for them to freeze. Now that all of them are frozen, we sought to measure the melting points of all three, starting with the no salt, which measured 0 degrees Celsius. Then we moved to the one molar, the most salt, and we noticed a very big drop in the melting point. If you look, that's almost negative 6 degrees Celsius. Then when we moved to the point one molar, we observed that the freezing point was only slightly below zero. Not satisfied with the accuracy of just the thermometer, we switched to a thermocouple, which is an electronic way of measuring the freezing temperature. Using these accurate measurements, we were able to construct a graph of the freezing point depression versus the concentration of the salt. As you can see in this graph, we, c we get the correct trend in that the freezing point is decreasing with increasing salt, but we measure too much of an increase. We imagine that this is probably due to either an error in our thermocouple, because it's very old, or because we added too much salt, so an error in our measurements. Bringing it back to why you can float so well in the Dead Sea, we also performed a brief experiment to determine the density of the solutions. It was really simple. We just weighed 10 milliliters of solution in a graduated cylinder and then calculated the density, which is the mass divided by the volume. We got the mass from the high accuracy scientific balance, as you can see here. The balance shows that the deionized water weighs almost exactly 10 grams, which is consistent with the density of pure water, 1 gram per milliliter. Now we plot the density of the solution versus concentration of salt. While we show the correct trend, the data from these calculations is actually not very trustworthy. This is because the changes in mass that we get from adding the salt are almost the same as the error from estimating the volume with the graduated cylinder. In any case, there is a clear trend for increasing density with increasing salt concentration. The most extreme example of this is the Dead Sea, which can also provide for some serious fun for you and your friends. So remember, science is not only interesting, but it's also fun. And hey, it might even also be relaxing.